it's time for another module video for my Urban Bug Out Bag video series version 3.0. In one of the earlier module videos we covered my food module. So we have food. In the last module video we covered my fire module. So we have a method for starting fire. Now let's combine the food module and the fire module. We'll need to prepare the food somehow. So let's get started now with the cooking module. So for my purposes, my cooking module is going to be fairly basic. This isn't Top Chef or anything. We're talking about something to include in a bug out bag for emergency purposes. So basically all I want to do is be able to boil water. So there's going to be uh, two main components to it. So basically a pot and a stove for boiling the water and then some additional accessories. And that's all the items that are going to be included in this cooking module. So let's go into each of these components now and talk about the items in a little bit more detail. The primary item of my cooking module is this solo stove. I've been uh, toying with purchasing this stove for a while now and I was finally sold on it by watching a video by Canadian Prepper. I'll include an annotation. Make sure you check out his review of the solo stove. It's an awesome stove, not only for uh, backpacking, camping, but also for bug out bags. I'd probably say at this point in time, this is probably the best stove uh, to include in a bug out bag. It's a little bit more expensive than some other more affordable options, but it's highly efficient and it works as a system. And I really, really like uh, using systems for my various kits as you guys probably can imagine. So let's deep dive now into the solo stove and how it's, I'm going to be using it with my bug out bag. The solo stove works as a nested system. So start opening it up now. So you have a drawstring a pouch that you see here. So taking it out first, we have the main pot. And then if you were to open that up, the lid of it is where you're going to have the actual stove to it. So I have a few different stove options in here. I have the primary stove and then a backup. So you have an additional pouch that you see here for the stove. We put the lid back on the actual pot and then we open this up and we have the actual stove. The solo stove is designed as a wood burning stove, which may seem like a bad idea in an urban environment, uh, but you'd be very surprised on how little uh, fuel you actually need for this. So we're talking uh, a handful of twigs, uh, some dry leaves, your fire starter from your fire module, and you could really get this thing going. Again, check out Canadian Pepper's review on the solo stove. He deep dives into it in, in a great amount of detail. Uh, what I have here is my backup stove, which we'll talk in a little bit more detail later. So basically the solo stove kind of works like a, the, a nested Rus Russian doll set if you're familiar with those. So uh, you have your wood burning stove over here and uh, then you're just going to set the pot on top of it. Have a little bit of wind here and it's going to be uh, working like that. So you have a nice handle on the pot over here and then you're going to be uh, filling up the fuel uh, through this little hole that you see here. So you have a lot of airflow as you see all around it and it burns very very efficiently. Uh, so again just uh, use your, your petroleum soaked cotton balls, uh, get some twigs, throw them in there, light that, get that going and then just start adding on to it and you'll get a nice fire going with this uh, to quickly be able to burn uh, to boil water for your uh, not only for purifying water filtering it but also for uh, making the hot meals with uh, Mountain House food. Let's take a quick little look inside the solo stove as you see here. So we have that kind of graded area and that's going to keep everything elevated and then you have uh, the wind uh, flowing here through the bottom. So again it's very very efficient design and I'm really really impressed with it. Uh, I just think this is the, the probably the best bug out bag stove that you could ask for uh, because you have that renewable fuel source and it's very very efficient and it works in a system. It's a little bit larger than some other setups for example if you're using the uh, MSR pocket rocket or anything like that uh, but just having that renewable uh, fuel source and how efficient it is just makes it a very worthwhile system to include not only in backpacking uh, but also for a bug out bag. Just in case I wasn't able to obtain any kind of wood for burning in the solo stove, I have a backup stove, which is also part of the solo stove product line. This is an alcohol burning stove, uh, very similar to the penny stove designs, which are very uh, much more affordable, but this one is extremely efficient. So you have the, the handle over here, and then you're going to be having your fuel on the inside here. So it's a very, very efficient design, just like the penny stove, uh, which I have a video on, although it's not one of my better videos. Uh, but this would be my backup fuel source. And I like using the denitrated alcohol as a fuel source for these kind of stoves. Uh, it's, it cleans a little bit burner than the heat. Uh, but you could also use something like uh, Bacardi 151 or Wild Turkey 151. Uh, but it's again, it's designed as an alcohol burning stove. Regarding the denitrate alcohol, I haven't quite decided on what kind of storage container that I want to have for long-term storage in the bug out bag. Uh, with denitrate alcohol, it's prone to leaking in many different containers, although I'm researching uh, some certain methods that I've looked up online, basically for plastics. Uh, I'm looking into a plastic that's HDPE, uh, which is uh, good for uh, long-term storage of that, although I want to test it just to be sure. Uh, these particular ones are made by Nalgene, so they, they don't leak. And I just want to see that the 
denitured alcohol doesn't actually leak through here. Some other uh, methods that I'm currently testing is using like a hydrogen peroxide bottle or uh, rubbing alcohol, something like that, a small one, something that's going to be lightweight. I just want to have a little bit of that alcohol uh, fuel to be able to put in here, uh, but I was going to be relying on actual wood with the solo stove as my primary uh, burning technique for the bug out bag. That concludes all the items that I have stored in the solo stove pouch. Again, I highly recommend the stove. It's really, really awesome. Now that we've gone through all the items that are contained in that solo stove pouch, let's go through the remaining items of the cooking module. Again, I have a little e-bags uh, packet storage cube, as you see here, and it's in the color gray based off of the color of prepping video. Gray represents cooking. As you can see, it's fairly thin. Uh, there's not too many items in here, and it's fairly lightweight, uh, but it just complements the items that are in the solo stove pouch. So let's go through these uh, items now. Let's open up this e-bag storage cube. The items in here, again, complement the items that are included in the solo stove. First item to go over, again, made by Solo Stove. This is the Solo Stove Windscreen. Uh, again, Solo Stove is designed to be worked as a system, which I really, really like. Uh, I've included a PDF document that has all the items that you see in this video. Uh, you can download that in the description box below, just in case I'm going a little bit too fast. But anyway, uh, the, uh, your basic windscreen, this one's quite large, and it uh, really encompasses the entire Solo Stove well. And if you have just having a problem with wind, uh, this is a nice thing to have. Of course, you could do a makeshift uh, windscreen, but I would just like having one uh, just right there handy and it's very, very lightweight. So, a windscreen made by Solo Stove. Continuing on, I have a little bag of fatwood. So I have a few sticks in here, about several of them. Uh, fatwood's a great uh, fire starter. Uh, it has a resin that's uh, naturally uh, soaked inside of the wood, and it's just very, very efficient to use. Uh, I was going to include this in the actual fire module, but I liked having the nice long pieces, so I just stored it in the cooking module instead. And they're being stored in a, a lock sack bag. So again, this is leak-proof, airtight, uh, and so I don't have to worry about that uh, resin drying off of the fatwood. So just a few sticks of fatwood. Next, this was in my original bug out bag, but I just have a little bowl in here. Uh, this one's made by Cedar Summit. It's a collapsible bowl. And just in case I wanted to share some of the food, of uh, the mountain house food, and didn't want to share the bag itself, uh, I could just have this nice little lightweight uh, bowl that folds like this. So, a Cedar Summit bowl. Next, we have some UCO matches. These were recommended to be used uh, with the fire module in their previous video. I, I just included uh, this little set over here uh, in the cooking module, just in case that fire module were to get lost, I would still have some matches and ways of uh, lighting uh, the cooking uh, supplies and everything. So these are stormproof matches, very thick, big ones, and it comes with a few extra uh, strikers as well, and it's in a watertight container. So, so some UCO stormproof matches. Just a few more items in here. As you see, I have some uh, salt and pepper in a Ziploc bag. Uh, I just grabbed this from, I don't know, a grocery store or work or something. Uh, even though the Mountain House food does have a lot of sodium in here, I just feel better having salt and pepper on here. So just a few bags of salt and pepper. Uh, next, we have uh, just a small little cutting board over here. Uh, it helps keep the integrity of the, the actual storage container intact, protecting the firewood, and it could be used as a real cutting board, maybe uh, with some of the items out of the food module, like the smoked salmon, uh, but just a very lightweight cutting board. And then next, we just have the utensils in here. So uh, these are the uh, kind of the, the plastic utensils, although they're uh, very uh, well built. These particular ones, I, uh, they're either REI or MSR ones. I think this particular one is a REI one. It's a nice long spoon to get inside of those mountain house meals, uh, rather than using a spork or something that might be a little bit shorter. Uh, having this real long one like that is very efficient with the mountain house. And then I just have a full set of utensils here as well that could also be used. So a spoon, fork, and knife. And these ones I believe are made by uh, MSR. I'll include all the information regarding the items in here and the PDF document that you could download. But some utensils. And those are all the items included in a little accessories pouch for the cooking module, all which complements the solo stove. That concludes all of the items that I include in my cooking module. Again, it's fairly compact for the amount of functionality that we have, and then we have that renewable fuel source in addition to a backup fuel source with the alcohol stove. That's going to do it for this video featuring the cooking module for my Urban Bug Out Bag version 3.0. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching it. Again, I've included a PDF document that you can download by clicking the link in the description box below. It has a list of all the items that we covered in this cooking module. Please leave your comments below in the comments section. I hope you guys are enjoying watching this video series featuring my Urban Bug Out Bag version 3.0. On to the next module.